Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. Brother Maliki. We are the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and this is Ascension Presents. Last week, we heard a little bit about the conversion story of Brother Malki, and this week, he's going to share with us um, kind of the stories that went on from there. Thank you, Father Mark Mary. Great to be here again. Yeah, that experience of God's mercy in my life that I shared about that began this new life, this new relationship, you know, led me in all kinds of different directions that were completely unanticipated, you know. First was to begin doing missionary work. And that, and that missionary work opened my heart up to these experiences of Jesus and the poor. And in fact, it brought me at one point to the Bronx in New York City to work with the missionaries of charity, Mother Teresa's sisters. And it was at that moment during that summer that I met the friars for the first time. So I'm in mass and all of a sudden this like big burly guy with a huge beard and bare feet and kind of a dirty tattered habit walks in for mass. And I'm like, who the heck is that dude? You know, like I got to find out who these guys are. I can hang out with them. And in that summer, I got to know the brothers a little bit. Um, but then I went home back to Georgia and ironically left New York saying, that was really awesome to visit New York, but you can never pay me to live there. Um, I'm from Georgia and, you know, it was just something about the city. Like I, I, I prefer a lot more green in my life if I can have it. And, uh, and so I went back home and I started discerning with the diocese and went to seminary for one year. And during that year, I just came to see that it wasn't where God was calling me. And so after one year of seminary, I decided to leave. And it was a really hard decision. Um, you know, I felt like I had a direction, I was moving forward, and then all of a sudden the brakes got hit and you're, you know, running into a wall. And so I went back home and I started sort of regrouping and thinking, well, what does this mean, God? What is it you really want? Maybe the priesthood was this whole like Abraham and Isaac, you know, you go up to the mountain and you're ready to like sacrifice it all. And then he says, whoa, hold on, I got a ram over there, you know? So I was thinking maybe that was it. So I began discerning marriage and looked at that vocation um, and, and was really convinced that, yeah, this was it. This was what God wanted for my life. Um, and so I got to the end of college and was looking at graduate school at the University of Georgia. I studied literature and there was a particular program I wanted to go into. And there was like 250, 300 applicants for it. I applied and I got in and it was like, 10 people out of all these applicants got accepted. And I'm just like, woohoo! You know, you're just like totally pumped. And then of those 10, two people got a full free ride fellowship that was going to carry over into their PhD program. And I'm like, that would be so sweet if I got that. And sure enough, I get a letter like, you're one of the two that got this. Meanwhile, one of my great friends from high school calls me up and is like, hey, I'm going to grad school at UGA and looking for a roommate. And I'm just like, whoa, Jesus, this is your plan. I know it. And I'm like going full steam ahead. So graduation for, you know, BAs happening. And I'm at the party talking to a friend. And the friend listens to me say, you know, I'm going to do this program. I'm going to study literature, be a teacher. It's going to be awesome. And then I'll have summers free. And then I'll be able to go do missionary work down in Central America or South America. I'll be able to build houses. I'll be able to teach. You know, I can bring my family down there. It'd be really awesome. And my friend turns to me after I've said all this, you know, and told the whole plan and this miraculous doors opening up with school, etc. And she says, you know, why don't you forget about graduate school and just go be a missionary? And I'm like, like, are you crazy? Did you just not hear me? Like... Go be a missionary. She, and she said something really profound. She says, you know, when you're talking about literature, yeah, you were really excited and you were into it. But when you started talking about being a missionary, there was a fire in your eyes that wasn't there when you were talking about literature. And it just like, I was like, whatever. You're just a crazy girl, whatever. And I walked away from the conversation thinking she's nuts. You know, like, I'm just going to keep doing the plan. And yet, I went to adoration at this Eucharistic Congress uh, in Atlanta later on that summer, and my heart was not at peace. And so I'm wrestling, and I said, you know, all right, Jesus, like, what's the deal? Like, just tell me what you want, right? Like, does it have to be so hard to figure out your will? <laughs> really? And I'm kneeling before the Blessed Sacrament, crying out, saying, tell me, you know. And I hear just so clearly the Lord just speak to me and say, you don't know my will because you will not listen. And that turned into a moment of me putting on my like Catholic merit badge sash, you know, like the Boy Scouts. I'm like, don't listen, what? You know, and I'm like, 
Listen, I go to Mass every day. I pray the rosary. I'm a youth minister. I do Liturgy of the Hours. I read the Bible. I'm a super Catholic, you know? And so I'm like telling Jesus, like, Jesus, hello, like, bless the sacrament. Like, I'm telling him how awesome I am. You know, this is totally ridiculous, but there I am doing it. And, uh, and he says, yeah, yeah, you do all that. You ask me what I want, but you will not sit in the silence and wait for my answer. And just, <laughs> you're just like, yeah, I got nothing. I'm done. I'm done. And... And I just went and spoke to my spiritual director. He says, yeah, it sounds like a word. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I think so. Um, and so I just started going to adoration and was spending weeks uh, in a row of going frequently during the week. No rosary. I love the rosary. But I just went in with nothing. No Bible, nothing. Just sitting, me, Jesus. I'm here. What do you want to say? And in that silence, you know, this word came that was, a, again, after a few weeks, for me, this word was just clear, and he just said, you know, if you continue on the path you're on, I'll bless it and I'll be with you. But if you don't, I have something better. And at that moment, I thought, yo, I love better, so what's that, God? And, and it was just crickets, silence, nothing. And so as I'm sitting there waiting for him to tell me more, he's sitting there silent waiting for me to trust. <laughs> And I went and I talked to my spiritual director and he's like, you know, pray with it. And if it's still there, you know, it seems like this might be God. And, and I prayed with it and I knew this was Jesus. I just knew it. And I did the craziest thing I could have done. I called up UGA two weeks before the program started and said, I'm not coming. I didn't know what I was going to do. I just said, I'm not coming. I'm dropping out. Called my buddy. Sorry, man, you have to find another roommate. And you would think that at this moment would be like the glorious, you know, fireworks of like angelic, you know, crowds like singing in and like, oh, you know, and now you know as well. But no, like it led to five months of real deep struggle because I let go of that thing that my heart loved, but I didn't receive anything at that moment. And I was just thinking, did I make a mistake? What's going on? And I remember leading up to Christmas that, that fall saying, you know, I can't take this anymore. And I just said, Jesus, all right, Christmas, you know what? I'm giving you a gift. I was like, and it's a total blank check. You can write anything you want. I just ask you for one gift, and that is give me the light to know your will. And Christmas came, and my parents got me this book about Mother Teresa's life. And I opened it up, and I opened it up, and it was the book, Come Be My Light. And I opened the book up, and all I did was look at the index, I don't know, and I just started crying. And I just heard the word priest. And I'm like, what is it? Like, Jesus, whatever you want. And then literally that afternoon, I got a call from a friend saying, you know, hey, we're going on a silent retreat for three days, and somebody dropped out. Do you want to come? I'm like, yes, <laughs> please. I need, some, I need some time to pray. What is going on? And I went into that silence for three days at a monastery, with some Trappist, and, and during that silence, I found all of these desires, I found all these things that were in there. But I discovered, and I don't want to say I discovered, God revealed to me that the deepest desire in my heart is to live for Him. That the deepest desire in my heart is to be near the poor. The deepest desire in my heart is to share His love with others directly. And I was like, all right, Jesus, let's do it. And I got back in touch with the friars, came up to New York, visited, felt like home. And I was like, all right, I'm in. Sign me up, you know. And within eight months, I was entering postulancy in 2008. It was crazy. But the thing was, is that in the midst of all the confusion, in the midst of the struggle to know God's will, the call, the vocation was a gift from the Father to me. And the gift was he showed me what my heart really longed for in the depths amidst all the other desires that were there. What was that deepest desire? And he wants to show you what the deepest desire in your heart is. But we need to be willing to step into the kind of maybe intimidating, maybe uncomfortable space of silence in order to allow him to reveal that truth to us. 
Because when you know what that deepest desire is, you're, you're going to have joy. Like you're not even going to be, you're going to be bouncing off the walls. I'm just saying, yeah. it gets pretty awesome when you start walking in the purpose, the plan, the vocation that the Father has for you as his beloved child. Mm -hmm. Brother Malachi, it's uh, listening to that. You, I feel like what that that girl did to you at that graduation party, you just did to me. It's like that's that's like that's like you went for it. He went for it, right? And I don't know if any of you are feeling like that. Okay, not messing around. A lot to a lot to chew on. A lot to wrestle with. Maybe maybe the next best step is to watch the video again and like keep chewing on it because <laughs> it's like there was just, there was just so much there. We'd hate to reduce it to one point, but let's. Mm -hmm. um, Let's let whatever the Lord has been speaking to you through through Brother Malachi at this point, let's give him the opportunity to let it grow and uh, to go deep. Stop messing around, Amen. you know, give the Lord maybe that blank check. Come on. Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Uh, we are pilgrims. Somos peregrinos. Poco a poco. Vamos, Vamos a llegar. We'll see you again next week. Bye, y'all. Bless you.